Good morning and welcome to Wednesday Devotions. It's great that you can be joining us today. I hope you've been okay. Uh, we're continuing our series in Revelation, so please turn with me to Revelation chapter 2. And we begin this section of Revelation where Jesus starts talking to what is known as the seven churches of Revelation, uh, churches that would have been in modern day Turkey. So uh, Revelation chapter 2 and the first church of the seven he speaks to is the church in Ephesus. And we'll see what he's got to say to the churches and how it applies to us as we do church today. Let's listen to what he's got to say to the church in Ephesus. Revelation chapter 2 verse 1. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You have persevered and have enjoyed hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. I wonder what Jesus thinks of the church. I wonder what his opinion is. Uh, is the church doing good? Is it doing bad? Or is it doing somewhere in between? I wonder what Jesus thinks of the church. The reason why I ask is because the church is his. Jesus is the head of the church. The church is his body. Uh, Jesus gave his life for the church. Jesus is deeply invested in the church. And so I wonder what he thinks of the church. When a visitor comes to our church, we ask them, oh, what did you think of service? Or oh, what did you think of church? Well, how much more ought we to value what Jesus thinks of the church? After all, the church is his. Well, the good news is that we don't have to guess what Jesus thinks of the church. Well, he tells us. Uh, Jesus speaks to the church and he calls the church to listen to him. Uh, just as a CEO or a coach, uh, they speak to their organization and team uh, and call them to listen to, to them. Uh, Jesus speaks to the church and calls them to listen to him. In Revelation, Jesus speaks to seven churches. Seven different churches are kind of going through different things. Uh, and Jesus knows where each one of these churches are at. And so that's why he says, I know. Uh, Jesus knows uh, the challenges of each church, uh, their setting and situations and what they are going through. Um, and even in the description of Jesus walking among the golden lampstands uh, shows his uh, presence amongst the church. Uh, Jesus is deeply invested and heavily interested in his church. What has he got to say? Well, he's got some good things to say and he's got some really hard things to say as well. Now, whilst Jesus addresses each of these churches uh, individually, uh, there's one thing that he says to them all. And it's what he says in verse 7. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Jesus addresses each of the churches individually, knows where they are at. But the one thing that he says to them all is whoever has ears, let them hear. And what Jesus is saying is, I want you to be churches uh, who hear what I've got to say and who do what I say. I want you to be people who listen and obey, uh, because to hear is to obey. Uh, when we were younger, uh, our parents would have said, hey, can you do you know this thing? Uh, and we haven't done it. And our parents have said, didn't you hear what I said? And we respond, oh, yeah. Well, we haven't. You know, we haven't done what they have said. And by not doing what they have said, well, it's as if we didn't hear in the first place. Because to hear is to obey. And Jesus speaks to his church, compels them to be people who have ears that hear, people who hear and do. And the first church that he speaks to is the church in Ephesus. What has he got to say to them? Well, by way of modernizing it, I guess you could say Jesus offers his SWOT analysis. Uh, that is S-W-O-T, uh, strengths, weaknesses, obstacles, and threats. Uh, perhaps you've worked in an organization that has done a SWOT analysis. 
Well, this is what Jesus uh, offers uh, to the church in Ephesus. Uh, he starts off with their strengths. What is this church good at? Well, this is a church that works hard. It is a church that perseveres. Uh, they endure and don't grow weary. This church is good at not tolerating wickedness. Um, they uh, are testing what is true and who are true. you got these apostles walking around saying, oh, we have been sent. Well, the church in Ephesus is asking, well, from whom? This church uh, in Ephesus also doesn't tolerate what those uh, Nicolaitans are getting up to. And so this church's strength, uh, it's a working hard church that's persevering, hanging in there, and they don't put up with stuff. There's some great strength for a church to have. What are these church's weaknesses? Well, Jesus says you've forsaken the love you had at first. And I think what Jesus is saying is that you've forsaken me. You know, at first, you know, you came together as a church, you were on fire for me, you loved me, and that drove all that you did. But over time, it's kind of just faded away. And now you're kind of just doing church, you're just doing stuff. And that is really serious. And that is what Jesus calls them to repent, uh, to stop it and to rekindle the love you had at first. And it's a, it's a repentance uh, coupled with a warning as well. So what is this church not so good at? Well, they've forsaken love. Uh, their obstacles and threats, I'll bundle those two together. Uh, they're facing wickedness. They're facing these apostles who are claiming to be true, but in fact are false. Uh, they're facing opposition. So this is Jesus' SWOT analysis. Uh, this church in Ephesus, it's a working hard church. But somehow they've also forsaken love uh, and they're facing opposition. Now, what are you meant to do with a SWOT analysis? Well, you're meant to put it into practice. After all, that is the point of the exercise. Uh, but I wonder if you've worked for an organization that has done such an analysis. Management has promised change, uh, but things just stay the same. Well, that's not what Jesus wants for his church. Again, he compels his church to be people who have ears that hear, people who hear and obey. Ultimately, what Jesus is calling on his church here in Ephesus is to be people who listen and love, who listen and love Jesus and let that drive all that they do. And it is by being people, by being a church uh, that listen and love, that's how they're going to keep building on their strengths. That's how they're going to overcome their weaknesses and keep facing up to the challenges ahead. Jesus compels his church to be a church, a group of people who listen and love him. But not just for the church in that day. Well, that's what he calls his church today as well. So for us and our church, um, I wonder what our strengths, weaknesses, obstacles and threats are. There's some homework for you. I'll take the time this week to think, what are we good at? Uh, what are we not so good at? And what are the challenges facing us as a church? Well, whatever they may be, uh, we ought to be people who have ears that hear. Um, by being people who listen and love, that's how we're going to build on our strengths and overcome our weaknesses and keep facing up to the challenges. Jesus calls us to be people who have ears that hear. But not just for us as a church, uh, for us as members of his church. Um, I wonder what your strengths, weaknesses, obstacles and threats are. There's some more homework for you this week. Uh, what are you good at? What are you not so good at? And what are the challenges facing you and your faith? Again, whatever they may be, be someone who has ears to hear. Be someone who listens and loves Jesus. And by doing so, that's how you're going to build on your strength. That's how you're going to uh, fess up and overcome your weaknesses and that's how you're going to be strong and keep facing the challenges ahead. And so whether as a church or as members of our church, Jesus calls us to be people who listen and obey, who do the things that he has said. Let us be people who listen and love Jesus and let that drive all that we do as a church and as us as members of his church. Today, let's be people who listen and love Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that Jesus loves the church. 
uh, he gave his life for the church. And so help us to be people who know that the church belongs to him and therefore let's listen to him. Uh, let's listen and do what he's got to say. Help us to build on what are our strengths. Help us to confess to our weaknesses and help us to keep facing up to the challenges ahead. And help us to do all those things uh, as a church and as individuals um, by listening and obeying, by listening and loving Jesus. That's the only way. Uh, that's the only way we're going to build on what we're good at and overcome, on what, overcome what we're not so good at and just face up uh, to our obstacles and threats. Help us to think hard about these things. I thank you that Jesus is with us as we do these things. Thank you for his presence amongst the church. We ask all these things in his name. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. It'd be great if you can join us next week as we continue to listen to what Jesus has got to say to the church and see how it applies to our church today and to our faith as well. Thanks for joining us. See you then.